Greetings noisemakers. Today we're going to be talking about the Looper device and using Ableton Live to create looped layered music with acoustic instruments. So we're going to be using some microphones and a little pickup in this instrument here to um, create a little soundscape. Um, one of the great things that Live does is it uses the Looper device as well as clip recording, but especially the Looper device to um, create loops that can then set the speed of the transport or the tempo of the song basically. And we can base the tempo of a song on the first loop that we record, which is a very useful thing. Um, and then everything else afterwards gets quantized to that. We're using some acoustic instruments. We're using a condenser mic, which normally would have some feedback issues, but we've set up Ableton in a cool way, which I'm going to show you in a sec, which allows us to control those feedback issues. I'll play a little bit of a loop and then we'll talk about how it works. Check this out. So I'll fade that down now. So very easy, very cool. Just use a few buttons on my foot controller. By the way, today I'm using a Keith McMillan soft step, which is like a little USB bus powered um, foot controller. And it sends MIDI messages to live. And it's really, really uh, fun and it's bus powered as well. It also sends control change messages. So we can push down on, on those keys with certain pressure and we can use that to control effects with the pressure of our our footsteps. Let's jump into the session and have a look at how it works. Okay, so we've got a couple of main things we want to talk about in this session. There is firstly the signal flow into and out of live that we need to talk about. Then we're going to talk about how to set up the looper device. And then we're going to talk about the MIDI mapping that you need to control the looper device as well as the live session itself. First, we're going to talk about the signal flow in reasonably simple terms. So we've got firstly our sound source, which is the most important part, I guess. It's what's coming into live and we're getting into, into live in this case via some microphones and a sound card. Um, once it's in live, we can then mix it or affect it, um, apply some compression and EQ um, as well as some send effects. And then we've kind of got control of a sound that is ours that we want to play with. So um, we can then send that directly back to the output. We'll call this direct audio. And um, the other thing we can do with that sound is we can send it to the looper, which then feeds it back to the output after it's looped. This is a pretty important point. This is how we stop some of the feedback issues. We can set up our looper device so it only feeds through after the loop has been created. And this is really important. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. This little extra bit of information here is really about the MIDI control and um, you can see from this grid here these are the elements that we're going to try to control as part of the session and um, so the looper stop start in, in my case was controlled by the foot pedal, the, um, the soft step and then we sent some control change messages via the little um, Korg Nano control and uh, they're controlling the, um, the different faders and send effects and that kind of thing. So if we elaborate on this a little bit more, I've drawn a little bit of a signal flow diagram here. Um, if we start with um, up here, we've got our two main inputs. And so the blue is the microphone, the pink is the uh, thumb piano or the kalimba, 
this little guy over here. Um, and this is the mic. So the blue is the mic with the Kangeo. And um, if I just skip back to live for a second, you can see on my main input here, I've got my microphone feeding into input one and I've colored that blue, just like in the diagram. And my kalimba or thumb piano is pink and that's input two. And you can see that both of those, when I play the thumb piano, I've got that set up to be coming in here, input two. And when I play the kanjira on the mic, it's coming through on input one. Now I've got both of those ready to go. I've got them armed to feed through or send directly to their output by enabling this in here on the monitoring control. Haven't got it on auto. If I had it on auto, I'd have to record um, the channel to send it through, but I've got it on in instead. Let's go back to our signal flow diagram. So we've got our microphone input and our thumb piano input. They're both inputting on the sound card. One's got phantom power, one is instrument level. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna go into Ableton now. So what we're gonna do is group these tracks here and we group them um, in such a way that we can control both of them and send both of them wherever we like. So um, if we skip back to live for a second, you can see here, this is my group. So I've selected these tracks as well as my effects tracks, which we'll get onto in the next session. Um, but I've grouped all of those tracks together. Command G is the way to group them. And then I've created this group, which I've called input blend at the moment. And that input blend goes directly to the master. So that feeds directly out of this channel here and it will go right across to the master output. Um, so I can control that volume level here or I've got a little control on my MIDI controller. I can control that level here um, in such a way that I can control the direct feed that's going to the output. So um, if we zoom out a little bit on here, you can see um, I've got my group up here and the sounds are grouped together and then via my direct feed to the output, they go out to the master fader, which is, if we can zoom out a little bit, is just here. There you go. Um, so next we've got to talk about how we get stuff to the looper. So um, if I come back to my little group here, my sounds are grouped together here and I've got control over them. And I can send that sound through to the looper objects. Now over here, I've got my main looper object. Let's skip over. I've got my main looper object just here. And my main looper object is the, the first one that I loop to. And that sets the tempo and starts the transport. And that feeds through only looped audio. Very important. And then the extra loopers, which are over here, looper one, two, three, they uh, start and stop quantized to the transport. So once I've started the loop, which is in time, uh, well, in time with itself, and it set the tempo of the song, then I can um, layer things quite easily and they'll start and stop according to the quantization of the transport. So if we jump back to our live session, here they are in my yellow channels. And you can see that these guys, you've got to bring up your input output menu to have a look. Um, I'll just turn off my sends for a sec. If you have a look down here, input output, easy way to access that, option command I is the shortcut to turn your input on and off. Very handy. Um, you can see that, so I'm feeding these two signals through here, one through the microphone, one through the kalimba. And then those two input blend um, out, sent to the master. But then I've got these looper channels set up and their input is set to listen to the output of input blend, if that makes sense. So if you look at my inputs here, I've selected input blend. So these channels here are listening to that output group. And I've also set those, most importantly, to be listening pre-effects. And what that means is it's going to be before the fader and it's going to be before any plugins or devices that I might put on that channel, which means that I'm basically just getting a nice, clean, direct feed of whatever is coming off that group before the fader, because basically I can use this fader here to um, control the direct send to the output or to the PA or wherever the front of house is. Um, and no matter how, if I set that really low, for example, I'm still going to get a full gain sound unattenuated by the fader, pre-fader being sent to the looper. So these little guys here are listening to the um, input blend group.
Next thing we're going to talk about is the looper device setups. So we've, um, we've got our first looper device here and you can see there's this little loop here that was created. And uh, on this little loop, um, it's set to be four bars long. So I knew I'd preset to myself that um, the amount that I'm going to play in there after I hit go on the looper is going to be four bars. And then Live does some little calculations on the length of that loop and figures out what the tempo of your song should be and starts the transport perfectly in time. I'm just going to clear this buffer in the looper for a second so we can look at it completely vanilla. So all of these guys are clear now. I've got four loopers, one on each channel. The looper device, pretty easy to access through the device menu. It's under audio effects and looper and we just drag one onto the channel. Let's drag a plain vanilla one on here and I'll, I'll sort of get rid of the old one just so we can start again. I'll show you how to set it up. So this is the first main looper. If I go back, this is the main looper here, okay? Most importantly, first thing we do is we tell it, well in my case I'm telling it to record four bars. So I'm going to play four bars of audio when I set my first loop. Then I'm going to tell it not to add or overdub to the loop. I just want it to play. So I click on that once and that's going to enable that green one. And that means that after the first loop it's just going to play and it's going to start the transport, which is this information down here. Song control. I want it to start the song. Very important that I tell it to start the song because this is the first main looper and this is the one that's going to set the tempo and it's going to start the song. Tempo control, it can set and follow the song tempo. That's the other important attribute. Now last but not least, we were talking about feedback before. In order to not let it feed back all the way through, we want to set input to output to be, in this case, never. And what that means is, if you see now, on the left hand side you can see a bit of signal coming through there, but it's not feeding any output through at all. And even when I'm recording, if I start this looper, it's still not feeding through any output, but when I hit play or set the end of the loop. There you go, you can see that it's picked up my voice. Just turn this down a little bit. So I'll let that play through. But you can see that it's only fed that audio through on my voice um, once the loop has been set, which basically is once you tap the looper the second time to tell it that the loop has ended. So I'll stop that there. Basically, that's the, um, that's the first main looper. And if I quickly zip over to the extra loopers, those guys have a slightly different setup. They don't set the tempo and start the transport. If we go and look at extra loop one, this one here, what they do is they say, um, oh, actually in this case, I have got them set. It doesn't really matter, but they can start the song. So any one of these loopers could start the song in this case, actually. Oh, I forgot I'd set that up like that. Um, uh, but you can also tell it to basically have none on no song control. And uh, most importantly with these ones is about the quantization settings. So if we look at main looper number one, that one started and that set the tempo. So the transport is running and then we need to set the quantization for these guys, which I always set to be global. So I can set a global quantization up here, which is my global quantization area. And I set it to one bar, which basically means that when I start these loops, I just have to tap the uh, MIDI control here um, to start it recording on the downbeat or on beat one of the next bar. And then when I want to finish it, as long as I tap some time before within the bar, um, it will stop on the downbeat of the bar after that, which makes for a really nice clean loop. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the MIDI assignment mapping. You may remember from the previous uh, sessions that the, the quick way to access MIDI mapping is to hit Command M and we get this nice blue overlay of everything that we could map to MIDI. And you can see a few things that have been mapped to MIDI already. I'll get rid of my inputs, turn on my sends. You can see that I've got some send effects set up here um, and they're off my nano control. And I've also got some uh, levels, some level controls here by control change. I've got my master output control, which is very important. I've got that one set to be this master fader on the nano control. And uh, most importantly as well, well, you know, they're all important, but 
possibly the most important one, is that we MIDI map our um, looper devices. So these looper devices have a multi-function button and all we've got to do is assign a, a control change message or a note to that button and uh, that will allow us to control that device. In my case I used the soft step and the soft step was sending a note and um, yeah that's how I've controlled those looper objects. So that's that one down here. So we've whizzed through that pretty quickly Let's quickly skip back to our, give me a sec, skip back to our Prezi over here. If we look at our diagram, have a quick talk through how it works again as a quick recap. We have our mic inputs and our kalimba inputs, our thumb piano in this case, instrument level, coming into Ableton Live. We've grouped those tracks together and that's post our effects. So I've put some compression and EQ on those little channels. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, on my mic channel, I've got a little bit of EQ and a little bit of compression. And on my kalimba channel, I've got a, a bit of a, a big notch EQ here, which is cutting out a nasty frequency on the kalimba. So I can um, so I can group those sounds together once they're all sort of mixed and to my liking, and then they're ready to a send over to the to the looper objects, main looper and the three extra loopers, and also send directly to the output. And all of that goes through the, um, the series of tubes that is the sound mixer in Ableton and we end up with a lovely stereo output.